Okay, so the, does this kind of make sense to you? And, and this is kind of a big thing. I mean, this is a intermediate workshop, right? And, you know, for all of you guys, like I said, I'm very thankful that you guys keep showing up every week. You know, I really appreciate it. And for me to actually try to get you to the, to, you know, from intermediate to advanced or something like that, this is something really important that needs to be understood. So I want you guys to really, really think about it. Like, you know, the feeling you have when you play. Okay, and then you'll notice that a lot of musicians, you know, they might move a certain way when they play or singers, they might actually, I don't know, like, you know, like, like they're in their own world. It's, it's not even about, you know, they're looking at the audience and they're singing for the audience. They kind of go in their own little space. Like you can tell, right? You can, you can tell that they really feel something and then they're singing the song. And that's really, really important. And, you know, it's hard, it's, it's really hard to, to teach this. So I want you guys to actually take a couple of minutes and think of, think of something. Think of something when you play this first phrase. Okay, so let's just take that, that little phrase right there. I want you to take a moment to think of something. Think of the right story. You know, and then are you playing it the way that you want it to come out? And that's going to be the biggest difference. I mean, that's, that's Jake's success. That's his whole, everything he does, you know, when you watch him play, no matter what song, you can kind of feel something through this instrument, right? If you're a singer, it's a little different because you, I mean, it's not cheating, but if you're a singer, you, there's words so people can understand the story. You know, so it gets a little easier to tell your story when you sing it. But through an instrument, it's a lot more difficult. So you have to put a lot more effort into your song, you know. So take a couple of minutes and I want to hear questions. And this, this completely reminds me of what Jake tried to talk to me about this and I must have been I think like 12 years old maybe and so he was like 17 he's five years older right but I was about 12 years old I couldn't understand anything he was talking about <laughs> hopefully hopefully that's not the case but I mean now but but Jake was you know he would try to explain to me like no you know Bruce you cannot you cannot just pick a note like this you know, you have to imagine that, that you're the sound, like, like you're plucking the sound from the air. I'm not exaggerating. He was very, very um, animated when he would do it. And at 12 years old, I had no idea what, what he meant. So I was just like, okay, what does that mean? Pick softer? He said, oh, that's better, you know. But, but he could tell that I just, I couldn't feel it. There was no feeling. I wasn't trying to really do anything with each note you know so that's kind of what i want you guys i'm just trying to throw it out there for you guys but every note okay, the way that i come down okay and you know just for example right now you know because we're just taking a short line you know, just a short phrase, you might not hear a big difference, but overall, when you go through a whole song and you can commit to, you know, to that certain feeling, the audience can definitely tell, definitely. So I want you guys, I want you guys to try that. And um, I also want to know, like I mentioned, this is the first time that I'm actually trying to teach this, but I think it is important. Um, I want to hear more from you guys, if you guys don't mind, um, writing comments, you know, to let me know, or just text me, or just unmute yourself and talk, but let me know how you're, you know, as you try, what are, what are your thoughts? Because I would, I think this is really important and I would like to get better at teaching this because it is definitely important. I don't really know how to teach it. I'm just kind of introducing this to you guys.
hopefully you guys won't be like me when I was 12 years old. And you're like, I don't get it. What are you talking about? You look so funny. I used to, you look so, what are you talking Pluck, pluck the, the sound, pluck the sound out of the air. Like, what? Are you crazy? But hey, he was right. He was, well, it took me so many years to, to understand what he was talking about. So you guys, you guys try it. Anybody want to give me some feedback? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Come on, Mark. Give me some feedback. <laughs> No, no, I mean, not, not to actually, you know, I'm not asking you guys to, to play something, you know, in, in, in front of everybody, but just like, can you understand what I'm saying? You know, like, does that make sense to you guys? Um. <laughs> when I started actually feeling something, when I played, um, it's, it but I need to feel something and I went through a stage where it was it actually was the opposite so like if the beat is one two three four one and I just got to pick E maybe one two three four one okay so I would think like okay I feel the beat and that would make me want to pick one two three four one like you know just everything is harder because I I feel the beat but actually it's not like that. It doesn't work like that. You got to think of it as a phrase, you know? So um, when I do the part of... I can't really explain exactly how I feel it that way, but I'm, you know, like for me, when I imagine this, I try to, I'm, I'm trying to imagine like in my head, and I don't know, I don't know why you can think of whatever you want to think of, but I kind of imagine, I, I imagine like, um, like an older couple, like almost like a husband and wife that for some reason needs to be dragged apart. Like they can't be together anymore. It's kind of a sad, you know, it's a sad story, but that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking of. And I'm kind of imagining this more as a, as a movie something like that so i'm trying to think if i were to play the music for this scene where the husband and wife for whatever reason they need to be separated you know um and i know it's 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 sad just to talk about it but that's kind of what i mean i'm imagining and if i had to play that that short little five second or ten second line right there that's that's what i'm thinking of so i wouldn't i wouldn't approach it like know I wouldn't do that I would think more of you know like a okay so I'm sure a lot of you guys can hear a big difference in that okay so that's how I want you guys to, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating the, um, well maybe I am exaggerating a little bit because I normally wouldn't you know like I wouldn't go that far, but in my head, I am kind of thinking that, you know. Oh, thank you, Julie. I'm glad this is helping. Okay, so, okay. so while I read the, the questions and comments and as I go, um, I want you guys to try, to try to do that too, okay? So whatever you have to imagine, like I said, like if it's a rabbit, just be gentle. Um, and in some songs, like Shutdown is different. I'm actually thinking, um, I'll tell you the story of Shutdown. So Shutdown, in case you didn't hear, is this song. Okay. So this song, 
I actually wrote this song a long time ago. And the story behind this song was um, I was going to do a performance with, with Jake. And he said, yeah, he was playing a series. It was like a couple thousand people, maybe, maybe more. But it was kind of, it was something I was really looking forward to doing. And the night before, um, I went out with some friends. I mean, this is years ago, okay, like over 10 years ago. So I went out with some friends and we were drinking and I got pretty, pretty plastered. And I think we drank till like five in the morning. I, I can't even, I, I don't know, something like that. But anyways, the next day was a performance. And even though it was in the, I was so hung over, I just felt sick. And I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, like I was trying to get myself into, but oh, it was, so I mean, I don't think anybody could tell, but I was very disappointed because that was the first time for myself that I have actually, you know, like, like I I knew I had to perform. Like, why would I? Why would I do that to myself the night before? So I was very frustrated, and that's how I wrote the song "Shutdown." So I mean, the performance was okay. It wasn't my best, but it wasn't like, you know, they were like geez, what, what's wrong with Bruce? It wasn't that bad, but it's just, for me, I knew, right? Like, why, why did I do this? So I was really frustrated. So when I play this song, Shut Down, I do kind of, you know, like, try to get back in that, in that mood, you know? So every song is, every song is a, a little different. And you know, to me, that's kind of the great thing about being a musician is that nobody wants to listen to the same type of song over and over and over. So, you know, every new mood you have, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity to write a new song and, you know, things like that. So, so like I was saying, yeah. So in this case, the Together We Stand, you know, it's a much different feel than Shut Down. And it's important to get yourself in that right moment, you know? Okay, so take a couple of minutes, try that. Let me um, hear some of the, I mean, let me record, I mean, look through some of this stuff. Oh, sorry, Angie. Let me get you right here. Okay, yeah. So, so what you're going to do is, you know, if you're trying to play with feel and you're going to have your own, your own system, you know, like what works for you. Um, but, like, um, who is that who said that? Sorry, let me see. Okay, so, so Linda, you commented, right, saying that you find that stretching the sound on a note, I'm assuming you mean like, don't rush through it, but taking your time, you know. The, so, and that's, that's true. The way that you play that, oh, just the sound right here, You know, can you capture that sound? Can you do that? Let's do right there. That's that's the one. I'm not just C D E with the C chord. Okay. So of course I'm exaggerating both, but like one way I'm doing it just like ah. Okay, so of course you don't want to do that. But you know, get through the, the strings nicely. And to be honest, like for me, I do feel like I'm aware of all three sounds. I'm aware of the G, C, and E. Okay, so I'm not thinking of it as one sound. 
like this. I'm actually hearing the, oh, that was a bad one. Yeah. Okay. So the idea is to try to connect a story with everything that you play. Okay. And I think it's important because even as you go through, you know, even Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, I'm, I can kind of feel something like, okay, let's say I'm playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Okay, that's the normal, right? Okay, so what if, what if my son was a lot younger and he said, oh, Daddy, can you play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star so I can fall asleep? Yeah, that's a different story now. It might be more like... Yeah, and I'm just picking a melody, but I can kind of feel something. What if um, it was my son's birthday and he said, Oh, Dad, I love that song, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Can you play that for me? And we're at his birthday party. So, yeah, this is a bit different. Oh, geez, not like that. Okay. Now, of course, because I'm not adding the chords and everything in there, you know, I can't really jazz it up how I would like to, but the approach is still there, even though I'm just playing notes. Right, a little bit more up tempo, you know, something like that. Um, but going to sleep time. Okay, and I don't know if you noticed that I actually slowed down towards the end. Just to drag it out a little bit, you know, because it's, it's bedtime, right? So the feeling, when you, when you can start to connect your feeling with your playing, you're going to notice that things will change. People will start to be like, man, that was awesome. You know, versus now just trying to play a song and everybody's kind of like, oh, nice. <laughs> okay, so wait, let me um, check out what's going on here. Yeah, so, so that's, that's correct. You're, you're right about um, techniques, you know, like certain techniques can, can, you know, can emphasize something or, you know, that you can do that. But, the, but what I'm trying to get at is the technique, it, you know, you can't fake the feeling, you know. You cannot really think of it as, okay, well, if I slide here, or I hammer on or, you know, or pull off or, or whatever, you know, you can't really think that, okay, if I do that, then that will show feeling, you know, it, it all starts with you, rhythm, just like rhythm, rhythm starts with you. So um, I know you guys probably have seen me try to teach rhythm and stuff like that, but when somebody tells me I don't have rhythm, I can't play to a metronome, the first thing I have to do is make them understand that they do have rhythm. And a lot of times I do this and I say, can you, can you count to the metronome? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So now that they count to the metronome, you know, that should be proof that no, you have rhythm. You definitely have rhythm. If you're going like this, if, if you're doing like a one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, okay, that's a different story. But I've never met somebody that couldn't just count the same time to a metronome. So we all have rhythm. It's just you know we're we're so we have to do all these different things with our fingers, and we have to play. And it has to be in time with the metronome. 
yeah, that's hard. But that's not because you don't have rhythm. It's because you're trying to do all these different things at the same time. So that's hard, right? And with, with rhythm and things like that, I have a little bit more experience, you know, teaching rhythm. And I've, I've helped many, many students who couldn't play to a metronome. And they thought their rhythm was bad. But after, you know, after working with them and, you know, they, they start to get it. You know, and then their the rhythm got better. Not that it was ever bad, but it's not so much they didn't have rhythm. It's more like now they can do whatever they want to do in time, you know. So this is kind of the same lesson, except, you know, and like I apologize. I don't have so much experience teaching this, but I kind of feel like if you understand what I'm getting at, and then you really just take some time to to think about the way you play. You know, and when you feel something, that's the spark. That's what's going to make you want to play music forever. Okay? And it happens a lot where harmonic Okay, Ariel, I'll get I'll get to that. Okay, so so the, the thing is, I don't know if you guys surf. Do you guys, do you guys surf? But just, just think about it. I never used to surf before. I mean, when I was young, I never did. And then I remember people used to surf. And I, I used to think it was the stupidest thing. You paddle out. The wave pushes you back to shore. And you paddle back out. <laughs> the wave pushes you back to shore. And I used to think the same thing about golf, right? Golf is, I mean, if you look at it that way, it's, it doesn't make sense. It sounds like the stupidest thing ever. But um, I tried surfing one time, and it was, it was that feeling of, yeah, I don't know, it's weird. You, you're on a wave, the, the wave is pushing you. I mean, it's just, a, it's an amazing feeling to be on a wave. Um, not big waves, like, you know, just regular size. I would think it's more scary to be on a big wave, but, you know, just to be on a wave and, like, you see, you see the ocean, how the, the ocean, the wave is going this way, and it kind of sucks, you know, this way, so you can see the reef. You see, oh, it, it's an amazing feeling. And then it got me hooked. I just kept surfing every single day. I, and once in a while, I might skip a day, but... Um, for about a year, I think I surfed almost every single day and then I hurt my back. <laughs> and then after that, I kind of stopped and then I got better, but yeah, I never, I never surfed again after that. But, um, same thing with golfing. Why do you keep hitting a ball? Then you got to go walk to it <laughs> or you know, get to it and then you just keep hitting it further. And I mean, it's, it sounds so silly, but it's the feeling of when your when your club comes and you hit a ball like you just hit it really good that feeling in your hands that's kind of what you're addicted to okay so with music a lot of people that i would say majority i, I want to say all but i could be wrong but people that have played music you know for their whole lives or you know, they just love music it's because of that it's because of the feeling nobody really cares about you know like oh I know how to, I know how to do this. So I'm going to for the rest of my life now because I learned this thing. Okay, it's more about that, that feeling. You know, like seeing a story in your head. get that that whatever the phrase is whatever the notes are whatever the chords are to to actually match that and when it does match you know and it's just in my head right because i it's my story in my head and it's that melody but when it matches it really it's really touching it's a really good feeling and that's what's going to get you hooked so okay so um so okay so let's 
go back to, I know, sorry, I'm doing so much talking. I will be honest, I was, I did have a few beers on the golf course. Maybe that's why I'm more talkative than normal. But um, I want you guys to case. Okay, and it's a big difference. Like now I'm just trying to run through the song. No, no thought, no nothing. Oh, and we did this part, right? Did we do this? We did the, I'm pretty sure we did the whole song. So what I want to do is, oh, sorry, I'm just reading a, a Yeah, so Robert, so, so you're right. It has a lot to do with, uh, um, it has a lot to do with, um, you know, like getting louder, like the crescendos and things like that. But the, but the thing is, you know, if we go back to talking, you know, if I were to, to tell you that, okay, if you talk loud, then people will know you're mad, right? And it's kind of true. I mean, mad people, when you're angry, you say you talk loud, right? But it can't really be taught that way, you know? It can't really be taught where I can't tell my son, oh, if you're angry, you have to yell. Because if you yell, then people will know you're angry. It's different. As you get angry, it's just a natural way to, you know, you express it naturally, you know. So that's why I can't really tell you, okay, do slides, and then it'll make people think this way or feel this. Or uh, do a bend, and then people will feel this you know, it's not a, like you kind of have to feel it first and then which techniques help you express that feeling you know and then you'll learn it that way does that kind of make sense to you guys so i want you to try this line because i already shared the um the feeling of you know of a couple being put apart and the line is And I might actually, okay, if a metronome was playing, I might have to play like. And again. Okay, so if a metronome was playing I, I, and I have to play it in time, I would play it that way. But in this case, I kind of feel like dragging it out kind of gives you more of that, that sadness, you know? Okay, so there is some dynamics there. There is, I'm actually, if I were playing to a metronome, I'd be offbeat. But um, it's not that, you know, that's not my focus, right? My focus is the story. So hopefully you guys remember, if you don't remember this part or if you're new, let, let me know. I can go over this part again. But just an A minor. B, C, B, C, F chord. B, C, A, G, G again with the C chord. Then I play time. Okay, so give it a try. Take a couple of minutes. Try it out. But you know, that's where the love of music comes from. I mean. Think about just speaking, just talking. We, we talk because that's how we express ourselves. And everybody is addicted to expressing themselves, whether it's through Facebook or talking or, you know, whatever it is, you know, but we like to say what we think, you know, we like to, you know, and, the, and music, playing an instrument is the same thing. So go ahead, take a couple minutes, try it. And if you have any questions, let me know.
And then, you know, so like, um, I actually, well, not a lot, but I've there's been multiple, I don't know, maybe 10 times where I've been asked to um, write a song for a website or for a commercial or something. You just write a song for, and, and the thing is, I would say, oh, and then in Japan, I actually had one of my songs, um, they used it for a Honda commercial. And that was kind of cool. That was back when I was with uh, Sony Music Japan. But yeah, I don't know. That was kind of a, a cool thing. So Honda said that they want, you know, some kind of ukulele song for their commercial. And um, they talked to Sony. Sony talked to me. And so it was awesome. But, but then it comes down to, okay, yeah, I would love to do it. I can write a song. Um, but what, what kind of song? You know, so they actually had to give me an image. Like, is this just like a family, you know? You know, like that, that kind of thing. And they're like, no, no, they, they want something cool. That's what they said. They want something like more on the cooler side. And then they chose ukulele. So I thought, okay, this is kind of interesting. And then um, what I had to ask them to do was just give me a story. Like, what is the story behind this commercial or the, or the song? You know, like, I don't really care about the commercial because I'm assuming I'm just going to see the car and then maybe a close-up of the car. Maybe the car is driving, you know, something like that. But I needed a story. And, and that's the important thing is if I get the story, I can, you know, I think I can create something pretty close, you know. And you might like it or you might not, but I can definitely come up with something that feels close to me you know so that's important this is a really good I mean I'm not trying to <laughs> I just I just really think that this is a great lesson this might be the best lesson I've ever given in my life I think I don't know I mean as far as the content and the information that's the biggest difference right so I think I asked you guys before on a scale of 1 to 10 you know, what, where would you put yourself? You know, one being the worst and being the best. You might say, I think I'm a six or I think I'm an eight. Or you might say, oh, I think I'm a three or a four. But then if I asked you, what would make you one number higher or two numbers higher? Um, a lot of people don't know how to answer that, you know. And one thing I can tell you for sure, though, is if you get really good at being able to play something and feel that you're, you're letting out the emotion that you have, you're going to be a 10 in your mind all the time. You know? so, so, so like I said, right, I mean, to me, music is more of a language than anything else. And, you know, Jake uses a lot of techniques that, you know, like, oh, man, that's a cool technique. I just, you know, but I don't, I don't really practice it, <laughs> but I should, you know, but I'm actually really happy that I can, I can express myself through music. And, you know, what Jake does is amazing. And I think what he does a lot, too, is um, besides expressing himself, you know, all these techniques and things like that, that's that's more for performance and, you know, just make the crowd be like, wow, this guy's awesome. You know? Um, yeah. I, I, I'll be honest. I mean, I was always more into teaching than performing. So yeah, I don't, I don't practice as much as I should. I don't really look to learn new thing as a musician, but I do try to find new ways to teach, you know, certain things, things like that. But um, I don't even remember what my point was <laughs> okay so anyways okay so you got the line okay i want you to notice the way that i'm recording this can you guys do that that one didn't come out either okay that one felt good to me that was what I was going for, that um, 
This last chord here, and I want to feel, I want it to come out a certain way. Okay, so it's coming out that way, right? And then do it. And this part. So every every song that you do, so even like like this song, right? It kind of there's a coronavirus thing. I, you know, I kind of wanted to do something. Uh, this is kind of in the early stages where there was a lot of mixed feelings about everything. And uh, I just kind of wanted to, the whole in, my whole intention was like, not because I have an opinion or I'm taking sides. It's just, I wanted to say, I know everybody is going through a hard time. Everybody has, you know, different situations and everything. And you know, it's funny how, um, from what I've been seeing, I, I kind of felt like, you know, as people go through different situations, they have this, tenden this tendency to want to separate themselves. Like nobody knows what I'm going through and they want to, you know, whatever, do their thing, whether it's, uh, um, what, what do you call it? Well, you know, they, they want to separate themselves. They want to, you know, and, and speak loud and say, you know, and then, you know, part of me kind of felt like I kind of understand, like, I understand the feeling, but, at the same time, I think sticking together is kind of more important, you know, and supporting each other and understanding, you know. So that's how this song came about. So that was my message when I released the song on Facebook. You know, not that this is a really popular song or anything, but but you know, that was my my feeling and I kind of wanted to wanted to kind of do something, you know, write a song for it. And you know, for me as a musician, that's how I express myself, right? And so that was kind of my message. So for somebody to learn the song and say, you know, I don't, I don't even know what this song is about, but I'll just try to learn it. You'll never have that, that same feeling, you know? So that's why I thought that maybe if you guys can understand this, you know, when you play this song, you know, it's the melody. Yeah, right now I'm just thinking about all the all the things that you know goes on in my head. Like you know, it's kind of a bad time, and people want to separate. But to be honest, when I wrote this song, this is more for the people that wanted to fight to stay together. Right? That's why I called it "Together We We Stand." You know, and I don't know. It can go as deep as you want to talk about it, but but my point is, I do feel that you know, the song can touch people if they understand the story and if the story matches the song. Because I could have, I could have played it like this, right? Okay, so I'm doing everything correct. I'm playing all the right chords, all the right notes, and my timing, I think I'm pretty much on time, but you're gonna notice that there's no connection. You know, how can I how can I say this big, this big deep story about how I feel about such a sensitive subject? And I really mean it, you know. And then I go into this song and it just like it's like a robot, you know, I just kind of playing it, you know. And maybe, maybe this song isn't the best example. I know, I, hopefully I'm not offending anybody about it because I know, you know, the opinions are high and everything. I'm not trying to, you know, do anything like that. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I'm just kind of going through my, my thought, you know, my thought process when I was doing this, you know? So it's the, it's the whole thing about just even the opening line. 
And you know, to be honest, if you watch my left hand, I don't know why I have to do this. It makes no sense. It's just how I feel it. No. No, so and I, as far as like mentality wise, I'm approaching this song so different. Like not not even chords, notes, nothing, none of that matters because you know my muscle memory, right? We talk about muscle memory, my my fingers kind of know where to go and it's how I approach it. Does that kind of make sense? I can't I can't tell because I'm not like I said, this is my first time trying to teach this. And it's weird because we're online and I'm not getting any comments. So I can't really tell if I'm losing you guys or if you guys are really like, like taking this in. So comments would be good. <laughs> oh, the metronome. Okay. So. Okay, good, good, good. I'm glad you guys. Well, I just wanted to know. That's the that's the weirdest thing. I was I was telling Jake too that um so for a for a little while Jake was doing Facebook Live, right? So I think he did like five or six of them, and I'm not sure. But that was the one thing we talked about too, is that the interaction, right? There's no interaction. So we cannot see you guys. So Jake plays his song and he finishes and you know, we're so used to like, uh, you know, like, hey, all right, woo, you know, but then you don't get that. So you do start to think like, are they getting it? Are they listening? <laughs> or are they... it's, the, it's the weirdest thing. But no, I'm, I'm thankful that you guys. Okay, good. Okay, so as far as playing with a metronome, okay, you definitely have to practice with a metronome. And you know, the, the thing is, and this is, I think that's, I, I want to say this is how I think everything is, like whether it's a different sport or something. As a beginner, you have to learn a certain way. Learn your notes, you know, play to a metronome, you know, learn your chords, you know, make sure you can do this to a metronome in time. But then as you get better and you're able to play to a metronome, you can always intentionally, you know, decide to, okay, I'm going to slow it down here. But then you also have to understand why, why would you slow it down there? And it's because you want to give that effect of maybe. This last chord, I want you to listen to this. A da, 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 da. I want you to listen to this chord right here. Okay. I'm just going to slow it down a little bit. Okay, I'm trying to, by slowing it down, I feel like I'm trying to capture you into this thing, like make you expect the chord, but it didn't come out yet, and now it came out. And that's what I'm trying to do. Like, that's my personal feeling behind when I play it like that and I slow it down, see? So it doesn't work, though, if I tell you, if you slow down, then you're going to capture your, your listener. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You have to feel it. You have to try to do that. And a good practice, and I used to have a lot of my students do this, though, is I would tell them to go on YouTube, choose, you know, whatever kind of commercial you want to find, um, whether it's a car commercial, or soda commercial, any commercial, and just mute all the sound and try to record something or try to play something over it and i used to do this a lot i used to i used to love doing this i would i would watch like a coke commercial or something so i don't know i forget the commercial was like i don't know a guy opens a coke it looks good he pops the bottle and then there's a girl walking and you know and i would spend a lot of time trying to create music for this you know and i think this really helped me 
you know, so for a lot of you guys that are um, at the intermediate level and you guys want to get better, or you feel like you're not getting the, the attention you deserve or the, the response, you know, that, that you feel you, you should be getting. Um, it's not, it's really not about learning more techniques. It's not about playing faster. It's not about, you know, it's about just how you present the song. And then um, if you were to go on YouTube now and just, just type in while my guitar gently weeps, there's like hundreds of people playing it. And then you just kind of use your own judgment, right? And you say, oh, this one's good. Uh, this one's not that good. You just, you know, it's not that clean or it's, you know, you're just trying to play the note. You, you can tell. And then you have to be able to, to kind of critique yourself, you know? Um, if you're saying, I want to add more feel to my playing, you're gonna, right? You might, you, maybe all of you guys are thinking that, oh yeah, I want to, I'm going to start focusing on that. I want to, I want, when I play, I want people to feel what I'm playing. And that's, it's easy to say, and you guys can all do it, but the thing is, well, what are you feeling? So I don't know, I'm just thinking about the C chord, <laughs> that I got to pick the notes. So if that's what you're thinking, if that's what you're feeling when you play, your listener is going to feel the same way. Okay, so you want to really try to feel something. Okay, now, I... Yeah, so that, that's really... Oh, sorry, Eric. Yeah, go ahead. You can unmute anytime. Okay, Bruce, I was thinking was that... Um, for the relate to the because usually people say we need to play so is that the, 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 the thing right that uh, I can't say that word probably the, uh, the, metronome the, 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 metronome yeah one and two and three yeah yeah <laughs> and when I would like to practice one song with your technique which is like slow down and emphasize the the part are you like you emphasize some part you by slowing down. Yeah, well, okay, so... Yeah, kind of, and then you were, when do you need to pick up the, 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 the thing again? Because I will lose it again. Oh, I, so I, I can't see. Play, I can't practice with the, 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 the kind of the, the, the thing. I yeah, can't okay. With, <laughs> okay, I, I kind of understand what, what you're yeah, saying. Okay, yeah. so, so my answer to that mm. is, okay, I always say okay, you should practice to a metronome. I mean, everybody should. I mean, you know, just to have time, okay? Now, the thing is, and Jake has recorded many songs on his CDs. Um, for the most part, he'll use a metronome, but some he won't. Okay? And it's because he wants to intentionally go in and out of the beat just to you know, express more of his thing. Maybe he'll, he'll rush apart. Like, like I could rush. Um, I could play. Okay? I might be just stay on the beat. Okay, so this part, when I go to a minor part, I might actually rush this. And then kind of slow down. So I kind of push the beat a little bit, then I, I brought it back down. But the thing is, it doesn't have to always resolve back to timing. You know, you, you want to you wanna be able to play in time because most of your songs are going to be you know, in beat, especially if you play with other musicians, things like that. If, if you cannot play to a metronome, you should automatically understand that there's no chance you're going to play with a drummer or, um, or you know, maybe one of your, your friends or something. I mean, when you play together as a group, you need to be able to play to a metronome. So I do push that. But, but like what, what I was saying is, uh, more in the immediate level, yeah, we do need to kind of um, understand what's, what's happening. So if I had to record this song, I don't think I would play it to a metro because I, the feeling I have for this song, it needs, to, it needs to be played the way that I feel it. And I don't feel it as a, you know, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. But the thing is, because I can play to a metronome, I'm not gonna like, you know, it, I can still, 
I can still focus on the feel, but it won't be so like I'm slowing down or I'm speeding up. You know, I can kind of adjust that the way I intend to. You know, that's, that's really important is, you know, I don't want you to, I don't want you to listen to this lesson and be like, oh yeah, Bruce said, if you don't, if you cannot play in time, it's okay. You know, because that's, that's not my point, right? You have to play. If you're going to slow down, or say, it needs to be intentional. You know, that's yeah. That's I, yeah. Thanks. I think I got, I th thanks, Bruce. I think I got yeah. what you're saying. Because what I was doing is when I was, when I, I can, I do the, sometimes, you know, intentionally take a bit direct in and out. But always mm -hmm. people talk to me. I, I, I had, no, so we need to practice with the, the, the thing. The thing is, so that's why I really confused when I need to practice with that. Okay. But thank you very much. Good. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. But um, one more um, good example would be um, furry lease. If, if I were to play this in time, it would sound like this. Right? But if you notice, right, it's more like a. And then it kind of goes into the right now. So it's the same thing. I, I like that better, but it's not in time. So if there was a metronome playing and I had to record it, yeah, it would, it would force me to play it like, dun, 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 you know, but without a metronome, I can play it the way I feel it. You know, something like that, right? Just, just as an example. Okay. So, yeah, definitely when you play solo. So, um, a good example, I know this for a fact, I know that there are certain songs that um, even when he performs, he might, he might, you know, it, it's, so yeah, so there, there's certain songs that. Hey, Yo, hey, thank you, man. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Who? Oh, he's outside. Oh, open the garage. Oh, let me hold on. Oh, I gotta start wrapping up soon. But um, yeah. So like, so I, I would say I know that there's there's a few songs that you know. Even if, if Jake plays, he might play, you know, he has his band and stuff, but certain songs he might not want to play with the band because he likes the freedom of, you know, going in and out, you know, things like that. So it's really, you know, it's, it's really about first, well, the first thing is you have to try to figure out how to, you know, connect your feeling with your playing. Okay, that's number one. And after that, you can start getting more creative, you know, with, with what you decide to do. And that's when things will really start to, to change. Like, so I, I've had many students like that where they take lessons. You don't have any, any connection between the, the feeling and their playing, but they'll, they'll just do whatever. And then they'll play for their friends. Their friends just kind of like, ah, oh, you know, and then they want to, you want to learn more. They're like, man, I don't know. I'm practicing this song for so long. I played it for my friends, but they weren't, they weren't that impressed. I thought they would be more in, impressed, you know? And sometimes, sometimes it is, it is okay to, you know, you go to like a barbecue or something, you know, you just drum a few songs, let everybody sing, right? And then everybody feels included and everybody goes like, oh man, that was so much fun. And you're going, well, I just played a solo arrangement, which is so much harder than just strumming a few chords, but why, do, why does it seem like everybody's having so much more fun when this guy plays and he just strums a few chords? And that's, that's what it is. That's what it comes down to is the, you know, they're having fun because they're involved, you know, they're, they're doing something. And you just have to kind of understand that when you get into solo arrangements, it's, it's different, you know. I just kind of want you guys to know that when you're getting into this next level, it starts with you. For, for you to get better, you have to kind of understand, like put some kind of feel you know, to each chord, each note, you know, things like that. Um, and if you guys, you know, if this is your first time hearing about this kind of thing, 
I would say it starts today. You know, you should start today. And every song, every song you've ever learned, try go back and, and play it. Like think of a story. If you need to write something down, <coughs> nothing's nothing wrong with that. You know, write write down the story. Imagine. I tend to I tend to often imagine movies. Like, okay, so uh, you know, whatever I want to imagine, I imagine it's a movie, and then I imagine that I'm writing the soundtrack. You know, that's kind of how I how I imagine things. You know, so you'll find you'll find your own way, but you need to you just need to start. You need to know that okay, I practice this song, so I don't need the chords, I don't need to think about the notes. My fingers know what to do, and then. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. Sorry. What, what was I saying? Yeah. So, you know, so you just need to, to imagine like, okay, so you're watching a movie. This is the scene, you know, feel it. What are you going to play? Okay. I mean, it, it doesn't even have to be a song. You, I mean, something like this. So I just made this E, D, and B. What does that, what does that make you think of? Like, you know, even though it's not a whole song, just that, that one little line, where could I use that? What kind of situation, what kind of commercial, you know, where would I be able to actually use this, this feeling? Now, can you imagine like a bright sunny day at the beach and a lot of kids playing around and things like that? They probably this wouldn't match. Okay, so what, what would this match? One more time. Okay, so in your head, what, what would you, what can you even, oh, that, that little thing, that would be good for uh, something, you know? And that's what music is, you know? There is no such thing as the best song or the, <laughs> or the worst song. To me, in my opinion, there's a song, every song, there's, there's something out there that the song would be perfect for. Okay, so you guys need to start to think about that with your playing. What is the song, the, whatever song you're about to play, what is that perfect for? What situation, what commercial, what something? And think about it. Okay, and I want you guys to, um, if you guys want to actually go further in, into this, I want you guys to go on YouTube and like I said, just... If you want to do like a soda commercial, just look for a Sprite commercial, cola commercial, watch the commercial, okay, car commercial, whatever. And it's only about 30 seconds, okay? So 30 second commercial would be perfect. And watch it, mute it so there's no audio, and create something. So I actually spent a few years, I used to do this, and it was kind of, it was kind of fun. And then it led to me like, oh, you know, if you more fun i started doing voiceovers i started i mean just i mean just for my own personal <laughs> entertainment i guess but you guys should definitely do that and you know i know that um hopefully hopefully i didn't um because i know a lot of you guys too when you guys come on the workshop you guys want to learn technic you know something new like a new song or at least a new lick or something but yeah we didn't really do that today but I want you to really understand, though, that um, this is really important. This is the biggest difference between why you might not be able to do well on stage. You know, if you were to perform in front of 100 people or 1,000 people, this is the, the biggest difference, you know. So, yeah, I want you guys to really try to take this to heart and really think about it. And like I said, 
every single song you know, even like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, I think you guys can. You guys can, you know, just just play it a certain way. <laughs> Nope, a little past it. Okay, you're gonna notice what when I stop the strings. What does that do to the song? What kind of feeling does that does that give it? You know, so you have to do a lot of thinking. You know, just trying to connect yourself. To your instrument, and I think if you guys can spend a week trying to do that with every single song that you've learned or something, you're gonna notice that the way you approach the way you approach your instrument will be a lot different, and that's what's gonna hook you for life. Then you'll never ever give up playing the ukulele once you kind of experience that. Okay, does that kind of make sense to you guys? Yes and no. <laughs> no, I, I hear you. I, I completely understand. Like I said, the reason why I've never, I never taught this before is because it's just too hard to teach. It's really difficult to teach. And to be honest, um, I guess as a teacher, you know, normally people come in and they, you know, they pay for lessons, right? So... I don't try, I'll never try to teach something that I cannot teach. But in this case, you know, it's, it's just, we're just kind of hanging out. It's a free lesson and, you know, it's my birthday. I'm feeling good. I thought, I'll just try it, you know. But like I said, uh, this is probably the most important lesson you guys will ever get from me. I just, you know, I wish I could explain it better, but it's, you know, kind of like that. Oh, wait, the secret. No, that was the life changer. This one's not quite a life changer. It could be. Oh, man, I'm full of a, a lot of stuff. Good information. Okay, so, um, yeah, like I said, um, everything we talked about today is not so much a technical thing where I can say you that's right or that's wrong. It's more about you guys kind of feeling it and, you know, getting creative with your own playing. And that's pretty much what makes this so hard to teach because there's no right or wrong. It's kind of like improvising, right? Soloing like that. But I think you guys can do it. And I'm glad that I got to mention this to you guys. So hopefully you can, um, you know, you can kind of go back, review some of your old songs, think of stories. And I'm pretty sure your playing will definitely improve. Okay. Nobody can really explain why why one version of a song is better than another version of a song you know it's i mean what if what if two people sing the same exact song you know you just kind of listen to it and you just kind of like ah oh, well this guy has more feeling you know so i i like this guy and the other guy you know some, something like that I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys know what i'm talking about um Yeah, that's that's definitely true. You know, I mean, just look at the just look at the way you you know like kids. I mean, they all kind of grow up the same way. You know, hey, say thank you. Oh, you know, uh, hey, pick up your mess. They go to school. They all learn the same things, and it's just training. And that's kind of like what the beginner level is, right? You just go to school. You're just training. You know, everybody kind of learns the same thing. But as you get older. You start to develop your own personality, your own character, you know, things like that. And then, you know, everybody, every adult is different, you know. So it's the same thing with music. It's, it's, to me, it's kind of funny how, you know, I don't know if it's because I've been teaching the ukulele for a long time or I've been playing for a long time, but everything can be, you know, related back to life, you know. <laughs> so, so it's kind of like, um, you know, you tell them, oh, say thank you, don't forget, you know, da 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 da. And then, you know, sometimes there's, there's like these gray areas where, 
you know, my son might say, oh, so if this happens and or something like this happens, should I still say thank you or not or don't say thank you? And it's kind of like, yeah, now it's getting it's getting kind of weird. I, you know, at some point I got to let them go and just be like, dude, do what you think. If somebody does something nice for you, you say thank you. It's the right thing to do. You know, um, don't force it. You know, you don't have to say I mean, whatever you think. At some point I have to kind of let him be himself, you know. And that's kind of what we're talking about as far as playing the ukulele today is, you know, you, I think maybe some of you has, you know, you guys had enough lessons of having a teacher like me tell you, do this, do this, hold this chord, play this note, uh, not too, not too strong. You want to play a little soft, you know, now it's time for you guys to, you know, just try to, you know, do your own thing. So it makes sense to you. And, and like I said, if you guys ever have any questions, you know, I'm, I'm here for you guys. But it's, it's a great experiment, I think, you know. And that's when you guys are going to realize, like, oh, okay, well, I know my chords. I know my notes. Yeah, I know how to arrange my own songs, you know. And, hey, Bruce is saying that maybe I'm ready to go off on my own. Just give it a try, you know. But, you know, just, just come here and hang out, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah well i'm glad i'm glad you guys took today's lesson great to be honest the, the only reason why like i said the only reason why i did this was because it is a free lesson and sometimes i worry about you know the not everybody can understand or you know take in what i'm saying and you know sometimes when you're getting paid it's just easier to do what people expect you know but i'm glad i think this is this is a great lesson today I'm glad you guys took it to heart. Oh, good, Julie. I'm happy for you. But I, I guarantee it's not, it's not going to be like just because I said, like, okay, go, you know, add some feeling to your music. Like, now you're going to be able to do it, you know. But you need to keep trying, and then you'll kind of, something will kind of click. And then what you're going to realize later where you want to be, the point you want to be at is where you practice the songs enough where you know already, okay, muscle memory. I always talk about muscle memory, right? Muscle memory of kids. I don't need to know the chords because my fingers just will do it no matter what. You don't have to think of the chords. You don't have to think of your notes. Your fingers will just do it. And then you can spend all your focus on playing it the way you want to play it, you know? So I think it will be huge for maybe not all of you, but I think some of you will get it. And you're going to say, man, I'm so glad I, 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 I logged into Bruce's workshop. And then some of you, if you guys don't get it, um, that's fine. Just try it and don't, don't give up. Eventually, you'll get it, you know. Um, but we just got to keep working at it. You know, that's what we work towards. Okay, so... I have to start wrapping up. Oh, I appreciate that. No, I mean, like, like I said, I mean, I, I try my best to, I, I love to share knowledge or, you know, whatever, whatever I can. And um, yeah, I'm glad you guys are around. You guys, you know, taking interest. So at least, you know, like, to be honest, my son, he's not that interested in playing the ukulele. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I can share my knowledge with somebody. You know, so it's good. It's good to have you guys. All right. And like I said, anytime you guys have a question, email me. Um, you know, you don't have to wait for the next episode. You don't have to wait for the next workshop. You know, I'm here for you guys, and I I appreciate your guys' support. So, all right. So anytime, I'm gonna start wrapping up. I'm going to go um, have a drink with my, uh, my dad. All right. You guys take care. Thank you very much. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for hanging out. I'll see you guys next week. All right. Happy birthday. Thank you, man. Thank you. Cheers. All right. Bye. Bye.